Okay, and our last collection type, which is uh, dictionaries. Uh, once again, very similar to the other three, uh, but uh, some differences that are significant and important. So let's take a look. We'll jump right in. Same format as before. Always, I'm just going to grab this call right now before we even get down to the bottom screen. And I'll go ahead and clear this. All right, what are the qualities here that we have? Uh, duplicate. Duplicates are not allowed, once again, right? Just like with a set, we're not allowed to have duplicates. Uh, elements are ordered, okay? So we can, we are sure, we can be sure, we can be certain that elements, when they uh, are, are, are printed or accessed in some sort of way, that they will be in the same order that we created them, or at least we know through subsequent accesses, even if we don't know how it was originally created, uh, each time that we access, the order will be the same, right? Okay. So they are ordered. So we can we can rely on the order that they're in. Okay, that's what that means. Uh, they are mutable, so we can modify them, right? Individual elements. So the indexing, though, is where the big difference is here. This time, you're going to see when I show when I walk you through the uh, uh, the creation of the dictionary, we're going to use key value pairs, where effectively, you're creating your own index. The, the the programmer is creating their own index. We don't have to use the index zero and then one and then two. Um, the index to use. In, what's nice about this is it allows a more descriptive index, right? So there can be key value pairs, is what they're called. So, you know, it could be name, colon, value, Boyer, right? Last name, colon, something. First name, colon, something. So it's more descriptive than, than just, the keys are, can be way more descriptive than, than just numbers, right? And so when you create the dictionary, it looks like you're about to create a set because we're using curly brackets. But the interpreter can figure this out quite quickly because here it's got its first element right in quotes and then it's expecting if this is going to be a set it's expecting to see a comma next but instead it sees a colon so now it knows okay this is not a set it must be a dictionary since there's a colon there All right so and then there's a comma separate separated list of those name value pairs right so what we then have here is, so, all right, just to be clear here, because you're learning a little bit about how the, the, the interpreter works as well, because you know it has no intelligence, right? So it's, it, it has to, uh, this has to be figured out based on the syntax that it, that's being parsed. So it parses a curly bracket, there's two options. It could be a set, it could be a dictionary. This doesn't clarify anything. That look is just an element. That would be the same. An element would look the same whether we, um, whether we were using a, a, a set here or a dictionary. So it's not enough information yet, is what I'm saying. All right? But the next, synt the next piece of syntax is where the final decision is made. Either the next piece of syntax is a quote or like with a set run back up there the next see this could be the first element right and the next piece of syntax would be a comma that is saying at that moment the interpreter knows this is a set and the interpreter at that moment in this parse knows that this is a dictionary okay so it treats this in a special way okay so we know how to create and initialize a dictionary and and then so we'll, we'll, we'll run our typical three prints here our first three prints and see what all we've got let's do this just to make sure i don't make this mistake again so class dict 
we would expect something like this to come out. Uh, we did, we don't know for certain what it's going to call it, uh, up until this moment in time. We don't know certain what's calling the uh, the type, the data type. But this particular kind of object then has been identified to be a dictionary right, by the interpreter. The interpreter has figured it out because of what it saw right here is, is where it figured it out, right? <laughs> well, that's enough for it to know you're trying to create a dictionary. Now, if you do something else wrong in here, it's still it's going to break because it's not going to look like a dictionary. It's going to say, well, this is not a set. It's clearly trying, we're trying to create a dictionary and there's some other syntax error. Could be a, you know, let's say for instance, maybe you miss that, right? Forget to type that in. Because it should be key value pairs. Um, so it printed the dictionary and let's look here. We, we see it's got a duplicate in it, right? Boom, boom. And let's see how many pieces there are, six. So we have six elements. They are ordered, they're in the same order that I created them. And I mean, just saying that, making that this first observation that they are the same is really not enough to guarantee that they're gonna be ordered because it could just be by chance that they came out ordered. Right, in the, in the case of a set, we don't know the order that they're going to come out, but that doesn't exclude the current, the same order <laughs> that, that could be too. So, you know, running it one time does not prove this, but in the language specification itself, this is permitted, they are ordered, it's guaranteed to be okay, uh, and they are mutable, which we'll test in a minute here. Uh, the index user right key values. Okay, so we now are allowed to have. Um, well, this says. Uh, I guess the documentation shows that d duplicates are not allowed. I bet you, um, in order to create a duplicate item here, while I was saying that we have a duplicate, we have a duplicate value, but we don't have a duplicate key. So the only way that I could make two of these elements the same duplicates would be to use the, the full pair el5 colon sys 108 el5 colon sys 108 and that would not make any sense right so i'm not even going to go to to try and prove that because it makes no sense to do that it, it's just simply not you're into this key or which we're now thinking of as an index um you're placing the same thing. So it's you're gonna wind up, if, if in that case, if we use the same key on both of them, you would be putting the same value into the same key both times. So you're gonna wind up with only one, right? That's like putting five into index zero followed by five into index zero. Of course, it's the same thing. You're putting the same thing in the same place. So it's not gonna allow a duplicate in that respect. All right, so let's move along. We see that there are six elements. That's what we would expect to see. Let's just start trying to pull some of these back off of here. We'll do the next three. All right, so what am I trying to do here? I'm, whatever key is, whatever element has the key EL1, I'm trying to print the value so el1 is the first one i i name them this way I, that's not you can name them anything you want i just named it element one el1 so el1 has the value seven element one so this is kind of like index zero has the value seven okay so i sh expect that we're going to see a seven from there I'm going to get rid of these so we don't get confused along the way. I was going to leave them, but I, now I decided it'd probably be better to just make sure that there's no confusion. All right. And then we're going to look at what's in EL3. So there's EL1, EL2, EL3 has SIS103 in it. <clears throat> and then we're going to look at the type. 
of the data contained at the key EL1. That's the first one. Okay, let's push the button and do the run. I'll just do this. EL1 had a 7, and in fact it does. The first one has a 7, EL1. The key, I shouldn't say the first one, because that's not it. it it's based on oh, whatever I wrote here is the one I'm looking for. I could have written anything there, right? I could have, it could be make, model, serial number, uh, anything. So there could be a bunch of different that make, uh, whatever. I mean, it's, it's whatever this word is, that's what I'm trying to find the value that's contained at this word. It's, it's functioning as the index. It's just that you get to create the index. Okay, so seven is what I was looking for here. I want the value contained at that key. And then we did it at three as well, which showed sys 103. And then we, we tried to get the, uh, the type, or I tried to get the type of the value contained at EL1, which is the, the value contained there is seven, and we know that's not in quotes, so it should be doing an int, and there it is. There's our int. So this all works. We're able to access. This is something we weren't able to do in the, um, we're not able to use those, this notation at all right here, right, in a set. So in a dictionary, we can use it. In a list, we can use it. In a tuple, we can use it. We're allowed to use it in a tuple, this uh, indexing notation. In a tuple, we're just not allowed to modify, but we can access. In a set, we can't modify or access. We can't touch it. We can't use this notation at all in a set. All right? In a dictionary, we, we, what we've seen so far here is that we can at least access. We can read. Now what we're going to check is, let's get rid of these. We're just going to verify this. Um, And in this bit of code, we're trying to assign here, right? So here, I'm, I'm actually going to try to modify something. So I'm going to put into uh, the value, I want to place the value 5 at the location EL1. The key is EL1. And currently, there's a 7 there, right? That's what we saw a moment ago. The sevens there. I'm trying to replace that seven with a five. I'm going to overwrite that seven with a five. And we're, if if it ha if it works, then we we've proven that the elements are mutable, right? And so we're going to prove it right here with this printf. We're going to print the value contained at key el1, which at this moment should be a five, unless it didn't get muted, uh, uh, modified. If it did not get modified it will print a 7, right? But likely, if it didn't get modified, it, we would have thrown an error. <laughs> and I'll say you can't do that. But it's all right, whatever. Let me push the button and this is, uh-oh. I don't know what I just did there. I could have just ruined everything. Okay, somehow... All right, let's just go with this. <laughs> oh, yeah, we made the modification. We assigned a five to this key as the value to be the value of at this location, EL1. And then we printed that. See, is it now five? And the printout is five. So, yes, we did. All right, so I think I think that we have completed <laughs> uh, all of the collection types uh, that that uh, Python uh, has available for us. Uh, there, there is an actually an, an array type in Python 
and we may cover that one shortly but um, it's likely just because it's it's so well related to these uh, but these are unique to Python so we'll, we'll, we did cover them and the reason I'd like to do array maybe is because that's not unique to uh, Python whereas um, lists tuples sets and dictionaries. Now other languages may have a dictionary or you know it can happen that some of these things are float around but I guess I'm thinking of C++ and Java at the moment in my mind and so you won't have those those structures in in those two languages so something to take a peek at. Anyway uh, that that's it for collections so we're gonna now I think what we're gonna we'll see what we do next I'll get it ready for you. See you next time.